Welcome back for another video on the best YouTube channel ever. Today's video will be about deputy gangs with the Los Angeles County Sheriff Department versus citizens of Los Angeles County. Los Angeles County remains one of the nation's largest counties with 4,084 square miles, an area some 800 square miles larger than the combined area of the states of Delaware and Rhode Island. Some cities within LA County have their own city police department, for example, Whittier PD, Montebello PD, Monterey Park PD, and so many more. Then you have the two largest police forces in LA County, the Los Angeles Police Department and the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. The Los Angeles Sheriff Department is the largest sheriff's department in the United States with nearly 18,000 budgeted sworn and professional staff. LASD has 24 stations, but within those stations, LASD has ties to deputy gangs. It might sound crazy, but there really is deputy gangs in LA County. For decades, there have been deputy gangs, but up until recently, the past few years, there was no exposure like there is now to deputy gangs. The Linwood Station was the home for the Linwood Vikings deputy gang. Like all deputy gangs, their main ticket into enrollment into these deputy gangs would be to falsely arrest someone, violate their constitutional rights, assault, attempt, or even kill civilians. Countless stories and incidents took place in the 90s with the Linwood Vikings. Freddy Fubiava was condemned and put on death row for killing LASD Linwood Vikings own Stephen Blair. In Men's Central Jail, the deputy gang inside is the 3000 Boys. The 3000 Boys was a gang of correctional officers inside MCJ who took pictures together, made gang signs, and were documented in reports of beating and violating inmates. There have been stories of incidents where the 3000 boys have taken inmates on elevator rides and beat them senseless as they were naked. Now, moving on to modern day LASD deputy gangs. On August 12, 2018, Anthony Vargas was returning home from a party when he was encountered by deputies Jonathan Rojas and Nicholas Perez. The deputies were summoned to the Nueva Maravilla housing complex following a robbery. They responded to the scene and saw Vargas walking through the apartment courtyard and he ran away from them. When the deputies moved to detain Vargas, authorities said a fight broke out and the 21-year-old grabbed a gun from his waistband. However, that was later proven false. Vargas's family claimed Anthony never carried a gun and the supposed gun that LASD claims Vargas was in possession of did not have a single trace of DNA or fingerprints of Anthony Vargas. An autopsy report by the Los Angeles County Coroner's Office stated that Vargas sustained 10 gunshot wounds to the back and rear shoulder along with the wound to the head that entered behind the left ear, one to the right forearm and a grazing wound to the head. In 2023, a lawsuit filed on the Vargas family behalf was declared a mistrial. The mistrial was declared after jurors deliberated for four days and were unable to reach a unanimous decision. The jury's vote was split 6-2 with the majority voting in favor of the defendants. An attorney for Vargas's family, Humberto Guizar, said one of the issues that contributed to the juror's decision was the gun that was found after the confrontation. The family's attorneys have argued that the gun was planted by authorities after Vargas was shot. The family intends to refile the lawsuit. Vargas's family and many others, including citizen journalists and residents of East L.A., believe Rojas and Perez killing Vargas was an initiation and in joining the Banditos deputy gang at the East L.A. station. Hey, huh? What are you going to say, Perez? Say something. Fucking Let's see those tats. Let's see those bandito tats, bro. Let's see those bandito tats. Let's see those tats, Perez. Let's see those tats, Perez. What about Jorge Serrano? Huh? 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 If you scared, quit. If you scared, go to church, bitch. You don't fucking deserve to wear that fucking badge. You ain't nothing but a piece of shit. You a fucking murderer. And we gonna let the world know. Murderer. Fuck you. You deserve to be in jail, bitch. Nicholas Perez, murderer. You fucking afraid of what? Two time murderer. I'm afraid of a man with his fucking back turned. You. 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 Everybody gonna fucking know it. What a murdering piece of shit you are! Hope you fucking go to sleep at night. Fuck that shit every night. I hope you fucking see his fucking face. You murdering piece of shit. You guys jumped the 
20, this unarmed, gonna be over. unarmed 21 year old, unarmed 21 year old for gang. The banditos are symbolized by the four Apache insignia, which depicts a riot helmet and a boot with the words low profile and siempre una patada in los pantalones or always a swift kick in the pants was created at the station during the Chicana moratorium when deputies brutalized hundreds of people gathered to protest the Vietnam War. Those tactics were immortalized in a mural of the logo in the East LA station floor. The station has been home to several deputy gangs including the Little Devils, Cavemen, and the newest addition, the Banditos. The Banditos consist primarily of Latino LASD personnel and allegedly do not allow women to become full-fledged members. Members have a common tattoo on their legs of a skeleton with a bushy mustache wearing a sombrero and bandolier holding a pistol, all of which are sequentially numbered. The gang also established a culture at the station where deputies work backwards, meaning they arrest civilians, then later come up with probable cause by planting and manufacturing evidence. Current leaders include Rafael Rene Munez, aka Big Listo, Gregory G. Rod Rodriguez, David Silver Silverio, Michael Bam Bam Hernandez, Silvano Cholo Garcia, Vincent Moran, and Raymond Mendoza, who call themselves shot callers. Bandito's meetings are held at the home of Deputy Noel Crook Lopez. The group embraces the tradition of violence passed down by the gangs that came before them and turns on anyone who questions them. On June 27, 2019, a man was shot and killed by a Los Angeles County Sheriff's deputy during a traffic stop in East Los Angeles. The shooting happened just before 11 p.m. in the 300 block of South Gerhard Avenue. According to the Sheriff's Department, deputies had stopped the vehicle for a traffic violation. Authorities say one of the two people inside the car got out and got into a physical altercation with one of the deputies who opened fire. A man described only as Hispanic was hit by gunfire in the upper torso and was taken in grave condition to a hospital where he was pronounced dead. Family members later identified the man as 18-year-old Paul Ria. A gun was recovered at the scene, but it's not clear who the gun belongs to. What really was groundbreaking and even brought more exposure to LASD gangs was in a time where police brutality was rampant. That was during the summer of 2020. On June 18, 2020, 18-year-old Andreas Guardado was working as a security guard at his job in the city of Gardena. Deputy Miguel Vega, who no longer is a LASD-employed gang member, shot Guardado in the back five times. Former Deputy Christopher Hernandez, Vega's partner, who was also present at the time of Guardado's death, also provided an account of the moments leading up to his death, but had an obstructed view of the shooting. That same time, in the year following a whistleblower or snitch was revealed with an LASD, the violent gang of sheriff's deputies at the Compton station who call themselves executioners. Their gang tattoo is a skull with a Nazi hat and AK-47, with only days before a trial was scheduled to start. A Los Angeles County Superior Court judge dismissed a high-profile whistleblower case that could have spelled out in court the secretive conduct of the executioners. This only helped cover up gang activity at the Compton station. Art Gonzalez, the whistleblower, had his name written at the front of the entrance of the Compton station. Art is a rat. Gonzalez had been the victim of retaliation after he attempted to report the beating of a fellow deputy by a tattooed member of the executioners. After he made an anonymous report to an internal affairs tip line, Gonzalez said the investigator who came to interview him intentionally outed him to the executioners, meaning he let the executioners know, hey, Art is snitching on you guys. Subsequent court filings by Romero identified that investigator as Mark Lillianfield, a retired detective who the Los Angeles Times reports directs a secret police unit to investigate Los Angeles County Sheriff at the time, Alex Villanueva's political enemies since he was rehired by the department in 2019. In November 2022, the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors approved an $8 million settlement with Andreas Guardado's parents regarding a wrongful death lawsuit filed in his death. 
that same time, the sheriff at the time, Alex Villanueva, has downplayed and dismissed deputy gangs as a notion that it was all politically motivated in an attack on him and police as a whole. In the past, Villanueva took issue with the use of the term deputy gangs, sending the county board of supervisors a cease and desist letter last year to demand it stop using it. Hi. 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 Can we help you? No. Okay, good. You just want to film? No, I'm okay. Okay. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm good. Are you okay? I'm great. Great. Thank you for asking. Mm -hmm. Remember, you serve the people. That's it. I serve the people. I'm a public servant. And remember, vote for Alex Villanueva. Never. <laughs> He's in a gang. We don't need gangs. Oh, that's not true. We've, we've, that's fake news. We've caught him. Don't don't believe what you hear. We've okay. caught them. Okay. Okay. Shooting unarmed civilians. Okay. Well, I I disagree. Shooting unarmed civilians is wrong. Okay. I don't know about that either. You shouldn't believe everything you see on the news. I saw the dead body. Okay. You shouldn't believe that either. All right. Take care. Villanueva lost his re-election bid to now Sheriff Robert Luna, the former police chief of Long Beach. LASD continues to run rampant with their misconduct from racially profiling, naming in more lawsuits and questionable acts like dropping people off in gang and rival gang territory, which both LASD and LAPD have been doing forever. In early 2023, deputies were ordered in various lawsuits as part of testimonies to show their deputy gang tattoos. Recently, LASD deputy Ryan Clickenbroomer was shot and killed outside the Palmdale station. LASD had more interest in finding out who killed their homeboy, unlike when a regular person is killed. Many people who don't like the police with good reasons had no remorse, and for them, it was another gang member off the streets. To, for me, it's just another gang member off the streets, you know, to be honest, like no remorse, no nothing, you know. The years and decades of crimes police carried out on civilians is karma and poetic justice when the police is on the receiving end.